Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take a deep dive into the ML Astro SHG700 spectroheliograph. This is an amazing instrument that can turn your small refractor into a versatile narrowband solar imaging device. Let's have a look at it. First, I'm going to explain what it is and how it works, because this is quite different from traditional solar imaging. If you want to skip the theory and get right to the product review, fast forward to this timestamp. A spectroheliograph is an instrument used in solar astronomy to capture images of the sun that are invisible in white light. It isolates a narrow wavelength range of light, usually corresponding to a specific spectral line emitted by elements like hydrogen alpha or calcium K. This lets you study different layers and features on the sun such as sunspots, prominences, magnetic fields, and the chromosphere. A spectroheliograph operates by scanning the sun's disk and isolating light of a specific wavelength using a combination of slits, a diffraction grating, and a photographic detector. Here's how it works. First, sunlight enters through the entrance slit. The slit restricts the field of view, allowing only a thin slice of the sun's image to enter. Next, there's collimation and dispersion. The collimating lens makes the light rays parallel. A diffraction grating spreads the light into its constituent wavelengths, forming a spectrum. Think of it like a rainbow. Why? Different solar features, for example, the chromosphere or magnetic fields, emit or absorb light at different wavelengths. For example, the hydrogen alpha line, 656.28 nanometers, reveals the chromosphere, while the calcium K line, 393.4 nanometers highlights magnetic activity. Next, you select a specific wavelength. You select the desired wavelength by rotating the grating, changing the incoming and outgoing angles of the beam. The exit slit is positioned at the location of the desired wavelength in the spectrum. This filters out all unwanted wavelengths, leaving only, for example, H alpha light. Finally, the outgoing beam with the target wavelength then hits the second lens, called the camera lens, really a focusing lens. This lens focuses the parallel rays onto an image on the camera sensor. A digital camera, which is external to the spectroheliograph, captures the filtered light. The slit and detector move across the sun to scan the entire disk, and the final image is built by combining the scanned strips. What are the pros and cons of a spectroheliograph versus a hydrogen alpha etalon based telescope? Advantages of the spectroheliograph include ultra high contrast. Typical etalon design contrast is 0.5 to 0.7 angstroms. A spectroheliograph can get to 0.18. It's also inexpensive relative to etalon designs. It has negligible unit-to-unit -unit variation. This uniformity is a big advantage over especially mica-based etalon designs, where you are often playing the etalon lottery. It should be noted, however, that Lunt Solar Systems in particular has good uniformity with their tilt and pressure tune designed etalons. Spectroheliographs are immune to FWHM variation, which can happen across different parts of an etalon. There is no sweet spot with a spectroheliograph. It's all good. Spectroheliographs will give you a beautiful full disk solar image with crisp filaments and surface details. You can see multiple wavelengths, for example, hydrogen alpha, calcium K, helium D3, etc., whereas an etalon system can only display hydrogen alpha. And finally, it can be used with your existing refractor telescope. Well, what are the disadvantages of a spectroheliograph? First, you have relatively poor resolution. Spectroheliograph mounted on a 100 millimeter scope might at best have the resolution of a 60 millimeter scope. They are also much more susceptible to seeing issues. Individual vertical slices in your image may be blurred. They are more susceptible to mount issues. You can get jagged edges on the limb if you're not perfectly aligned, tracking, and moving smoothly. They have no visual capability, requires a camera and a PC to see an image. They are more difficult to operate, requires three separate focus points, a higher learning curve than an etalon-based scope would have. 
and they're generally limited to small to intermediate focal length telescopes up to about 700 millimeters. This also means it's not good for high magnification views of sunspots, prominences, etc. It's really only optimized for full solar disk imaging. Let's say a word about cameras. I've used an IMX 178M and an IMX 678M, both with good results. The 678M is slightly preferred. You should note that I ran into a cable issue when I switched from the 178 to the 678. My perfectly good USB 3.0 cable that works with seven other astronomy cameras did not work with the IMX 678M. I had to use it with the cable that was supplied with the camera, which was a bit shorter than I wanted. If you have a 678M camera issue and have all the latest drivers, you might want to check your cable. As far as telescopes are concerned, telescopes with focal lengths up to 700 millimeters are best. In excellent seeing, you can use a larger aperture, provided you also have an ERF to protect everything, and then make a mosaic. I've done this with my Tech 160 FL at an 11 20 millimeter focal length. What performance should you expect? Well, first of all, contrast. This is where the SHG shines. It's fantastic compared to an Edelon scope. An Edelon single stack might be 0.7 to 1, double stack 0.4 to 0.7, and the spectroheliograph at 0.18. Resolution. Resolution will be worse than you would expect for the aperture you have. Uniformity. If you use flats with an Edelon system, you can routinely get excellent uniform brightness across the disk. With the SHG, disk brightness will be uniform, but you may see vertical stripes of different image quality caused by mount or seeing variations between consecutive scans. It will not be an issue if your tracking is very good. Unlike an Edelon system, there's no concern about finding the sweet spot. Contrast will be excellent everywhere in the image. With Calcium K, your image quality will depend upon your scope's performance at the Calcium K wavelength. It might not be as sharp as you'd expect, and this is a telescope issue rather than a spectroheliograph one. What about seeing? Spectroheliographs do not do lucky seeing like Edelon-based telescopes. They are therefore less forgiving than an Edelon-based HA imaging rig. It's best not to attempt it unless seeing is decent to good. You can mitigate suboptimal seeing by taking multiple consecutive scans in the same direction once focus is achieved. At least five scans, maybe up to 20. This will be covered later in the video. As far as your mount is concerned, you need good alignment and tracking to avoid jagged edges. Equatorial mounts are preferred over Alt-As. Now let's talk about the SHG700 specifically. The device is solid and well built. Controls are well marked and smooth in operation. Fit and finish is excellent. I did find there was a bit of a steep learning curve compared to other solar imaging techniques I was familiar with. Hopefully this video will help others get good results more quickly than I did. Eventually I did get good results that I'm happy with, although I'm still waiting for that perfect seeing day to see what the instrument is capable of delivering under optimal conditions. Let's see how to operate your spectroheliograph. First, securely attach your camera so the camera sensor is as close to the unit as possible. I needed to use an extender to reach focus, and you may too. If possible, use a helical ring design, which securely holds the weight of the device without introducing tilt slop that can happen with a simple single screw design. My extender has an internal brass ring which compresses uniformly and securely. Try to align the bottom of the device such that it is parallel to the plane of the dovetail. You can fine-tune this later, but best results are only obtained if the offset is less than one degree. You can measure this easily after you've run a scan. I'll be using SharpCap Pro. Let's talk about focusing. There are three different distinct focus adjustments you have to make. Each one is done by focusing on a different part of the image and with a different focuser. The camera focus is made on horizontal black lines. I'll go into details in a few moments. The collimator focus is made on a vertical truncated left or right edge. And the telescope focus is done by 
maximizing the appearance of scintillating vertical lines. Let's talk about the focus process. We are going to assume for most of this review that we're looking at the hydrogen alpha line. Ensure your wavelength selection is on HA. Note that the device is more sensitive to seeing conditions than an HA telescope, so it's best to wait to try this until you have at least average seeing, preferably good seeing. Step one is to point the device about 45 degrees away from the sun. You'll need to adjust the gain, exposure, and histogram stretch so you can see horizontal black lines. This will likely require a full stretch, at least a one second exposure, and close to maximum gain. Adjust the camera focus so horizontal lines are sharp. You might want to magnify it 200%. You then can use the collimation fine focus on the vertical left or right edge so it's sharp, again using 200% magnification. Then move the device so it's aligned directly on the sun. You will need to fine adjust the deck and RA until you see a wide, bright image in the center of your screen. You will need to reduce your gain, exposure, and histogram significantly so that you can only see a dark HA line and the finer black horizontal lines. With my 100mm f7 telescope, my gain was minimal, exposure around 1 millisecond, and histogram set to 75%. I adjust the telescope focus by looking for maximum visibility of sharp vertical scintillation lines. You then reiterate the camera and collimator and telescope focus fine adjustments until the final image is as good as possible. Then turn on the horizontal reticule on sharp cap and ensure that the primary dark HA line is not tilted. Rotate the camera slightly to adjust if necessary. Once things are all set, make a note or take a photograph of the focus points. Subsequent focuses on other days will be very close but may still require fine tuning each time. Note that you'll need to completely redo focusing for calcium K. Camera focus would be very close but the collimator focus will be at least one division less. Next we have to do scanning. Ensure the sun is centered on the screen. You should be able to move the scope slightly in right ascension and see the whole slice go left or right without being truncated on either edge. You now want to reduce the capture area to grab just the HA line. This will significantly speed up your frame rate, which is important to get a good image. With my IMX178 camera, I set the area to full width by 140 pixels height. In other words, 3076 by 140. With the IMX678M, I set the area to 3840 by 200. Then check that the HA line is centered and you can see all of it from left to right. Note that it will be slightly bowed. If it is not level, slightly rotate your camera. If too high or too low, adjust with the fine wavelength select on the device. If you make any of these adjustments, it's a good idea to go back and recheck your three focuses to ensure you're good to go. For the scan itself, start well before, meaning far left or far right in right ascension so the screen is black, and then continue left or right in RA well past when it returns to black to avoid streaks in your image. 
If the sun scans in an oblong shape when you're running your J-Solex, that means that the plane of the instrument has not aligned perfectly with your dovetail on the telescope. There should be a 1% deviation at most as shown in the logs. I found I needed to do several quick scans, look at the result in J-Solex, and make iterative corrections, adjusting the unit clockwise or counterclockwise to nail down my alignment. Stacking. You don't need to stack, but it can produce a better image by averaging out poor seeing slices. Take 5 to 20 consecutive scans in the same direction. I at first thought I could scan in both directions and then simply flip half the images, but it doesn't work that way and you'll create stacking artifacts if you try it. Always scan in the same direction if you're going to be doing stacking. Start each scan well before the limb in the dark and end well after the limb in the dark. Run JSOLX in quick mode and manually inspect each disk image. Delete any bad ones and then in Auto Stacker select Image and stack 100% of the remaining ones. As far as additional processing goes, I've covered this step in detail in other videos, so I'm not going to duplicate that here. Essentially, you need to run IMPPG to sharpen the image and then use Affinity Photo, PixInsight, or Photoshop to add color, crop, adjust contrast, and then do any denoising. I found I was doing minimal sharpening in IMPPG compared to Edlon sharpening, but your mileage may vary. Now finally, save your image. I would be remiss in not mentioning the outstanding support I received from ML Astro's CEO, Min. He patiently answered my many questions and even took the time to do several video calls with me, walking through the operation and capabilities of his product. Given the modest scale of his operation and how busy he is, I was quite impressed with his level of support. Here are my overall conclusions. The ML Astro SHG700 is a well-built, solid device that puts narrowband solar imaging in the hands of anyone with a small refractor for a low price. I'm pleased with the results that I'm getting. I see it as a complement rather than a replacement for my hydrogen alpha solar telescopes. It clearly provides the best uniformity and contrast of any device I've ever used on the sun and allows me to experiment with other wavelengths like calcium K and is backed up by great support. I hope this video has helped you learn more about the device and how it's different from traditional solar imaging. If you follow these directions, you should quickly get some good results with it. Thanks for watching.